welcome to Stoughton Spotlight. I'm your host, Jeffrey Pickett. On this episode, we're continuing our Conversations with the Candidates series, where I'll be sitting down with the two candidates running for the Board of Selectmen in this April 2019 town election cycle. There's two candidates running for a single seat on the Board of Selectmen. The town election, of course, is Tuesday, April 9th, 2019. On today's episode, I'm joined by former Board of Selectmen member, Joe McCriskey, who's looking to get back onto the board. Joe, thank right. you very much. Right. Thanks for having me, appreciate it. Looking and forward to it. So Joe's been on the board for uh, five terms, uh, since not on and off again since 1992. You're looking for a sixth term uh, on the Board of Selectmen. So uh, let's get right into it. I think um, you know a lot of people might be saying, why now? Why are you, you know, getting back into, especially a few years ago after your last most recent term, you, when you ran for town moderator, you said, you know, I'm not going to run for selectman again. And so why are you back? Because I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's simple. When you feel that there are people there that don't share your views and there's a certain message that's not coming across, uh, you owe it to yourself to, to get back involved. Uh, I would have loved to have seen somebody new run. I actually encouraged a few people to run. I told them I'd be willing to help them. Uh, nobody really wants to run because of the mood that's out there, and they don't want to subject themselves to it. And when you're learning the role, you can be very easily put out with the lack of experience. And um, I just thought it was time for me to get back in. Uh, I don't like the way the board's running in some areas, and um, I believe that there's a voice that needs to be heard that's not being heard with this board. Uh, and the conversation needs to be more of inclusion and more ideas. I, it feels to, like to me is that a lot of the stuff is rubber stamped. There's not a lot of dialogue on issues. It seems like there's decisions that maybe there's conversations outside the general meeting, which you're going to have, but there's just too much, it seems, I don't know, I can't use the right word, but it's too organized for me. And uh, before people would get involved, you'd discuss issues more, you'd debate issues more on the board. Uh, and like I said, I believe that there's a group of people, and the last election was very clear, 102 votes separated you know, the, um, the, the current chairman and Peter Buckley. So with 102, that's not a mandate by far. And uh, there are people that have said to me uh, that they believe that there's a group of people that uh, feel they're not being listened to. So um, as you know, and anybody knows, I've always been you know, right up front, been up, you know, honest with my words, not afraid to be the opposing side and stand alone when it's needed. Uh, and I feel that I'm gonna bring that to the board because I think we need some checks and balances right now. Just with the, uh, a, a board that really campaigns so much on process, uh, I haven't seen a lot of process. You know, and we need to do things a little bit different. So going back to the decision to run again, mm -hmm. um, in prep for the show, I was going back to some old you know, interviews we had done. I go back to the interview we sat down for when you were running for moderator mm -hmm. um, in April 2017. Your term on the board it just was about to expire. And you said to me at that time that you didn't want to run for selectman because your son was at that time a recruit for the Stoughton Police Department. Mm -hmm and we're going to the, the training to be on the Stoughton Police Department. He is now on the Stoughton Police Department. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to do that. You didn't want to be on the board of selectmen while your son was on the police force. He still is on the police force mm -hmm. though. So how do you uh, balance that when you know you had the position at the time that you weren't running for reelection because you didn't want to have that potential conflict there? Right, well before, before I could become a selectman and I am a selectman, I'm a father. Mm -hmm. I'm a father that loves both of my boys beyond this position. The first person I talked to was my son. And my son gave me, he said, Dad, do it, it doesn't affect me. I have a job to do and I'm gonna do my job. And that was it right there. You know, that gave me now, it was my decision to do that. Uh, there are gonna be people that will say you can't do anything. Well, the only thing you can't do is you can't vote on the policeman's, the police officer's line item salary that includes my son's salary. I wouldn't be able to vote on the appointment of a new chief. I do not see Chief McNamara going anywhere soon. Uh, but if, uh, if that decision was needed, you still have four members of the Board of Selectmen that should be able to make that decision without me. You know, so it's, there's nothing that really ties my hands to say that I can't do it. It was a personal decision. But unfortunately, in this climate, there will be people that will try to bend that any way they can. 
and it's a simple thing that is I can't do anything in which my son has a direct financial gain in my role as a selectman. That's very little. And that's only going to be at budget time and negotiations. I can't sit in on negotiations. But again, you have four other people that should be competent to make that decision. So there's nothing there that's illegal. There's nothing that I'm going to do to put the taxpayers at risk or make anybody uncomfortable. You know, and, and I don't get involved with any issues that I never did and I won't with, when it comes to issues that affect the Stoughton patrolmen. So, but there's so many more other things to talk about. I mean, mm -hmm. again, that was a personal decision sure. that I made, not a legal decision. Mm -hmm. I was challenged by one member of the Board of Selectmen to say that I couldn't do anything in a roundabout way, and they gave me um, some case law. And when I read it and discussed it with an attorney, it was totally irrelevant to the issue. But that's what happens is people will try to sidetrack you. They'll try to say, hey, you can't do this. And you know the, the residents could make a phone call to anyone they know in the legal field if they have it, or even call the Mass Municipal Association and back it up, that it really, there's not a lot that I'm prevented from voting on. It's just anything that has a direct financial gain by my son. It's the same as when you have teachers that have members on town meeting, or you know where you have a, a municipal employees get their affiliation through Mass General Law that says, a municipal employee is somebody that gets their position through appointment or election. So in one case, we have a husband and wife serving on the Board of Selectmen and the school committee. It's no different than that. If that person had a direct financial gain, one or the other couldn't do anything about it. You can't vote on it because that would be against the law. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very narrow limitation, uh, but when you're looking for something to use on somebody, <laughs> it becomes a big issue. So, but you're prepared to answer to that when? Oh, well, I would have to, yeah, sure. I would have to uh, file a, a letter with the town clerk mm -hmm. that states that my son's employed and all that, and, and I would be the first one because I've done it in the past, Jeff, mm -hmm. on issues that were really, you know, more form and manner than legal. You know, if I don't feel that an issue should be before the Board of Selectmen, I've done it before, I've walked off the board because I feel it's irrelevant and it shouldn't be before the board or it puts the town at risk. You know, and that's when I say I have the courage to stand alone if I need to. You know, and I've never, everybody that's challenged me in the years, I mean, because again, that's how some things work, uh, I've reported myself to the Ethics Commission. I've never had a violation or a letter against me by the Ethics Commission. So with the time that I've put on the board, I think that's a stellar performance record, you know, with all the issues and people that will do whatever they've got to do to try to make it so you can't vote on issues at times. So I want to move on to you know the issues on mm -hmm. this election cycle and going through uh, the penny saver ads mm -hmm. that you've placed. Um, you said one of them really s stood out to me a few weeks ago. I think we need to slow down a bit. That's a quote from from your ad. Sure. Um, no, that's a quote from me, not right. the ad. That's that's what so, I believe. Uh, tell me what you mean about the slowing down. Well, let's face it, Jeff. We've had the biggest tax increase that we've had in history with the new high school. I voted for it in the ballot. I supported it as a selectman. I think it's the best decision our town made. I give a lot of credit to the school department for keeping that building up and alive. And you want to talk about being on life support. They got what they could out of that. It's the best expenditure. But now this is record spending by this board. Now I agree with a lot of the issues the board's bringing up. It's not that we don't need them. It's that, you know, give people a couple minutes to breathe after that tax increase. It's record spending, and a lot of it has no financial. Number, number one, it didn't have a process because when they brought this spending to town meeting, it all got voted down. People like John Morton gets up and, and talks against the articles for the lack of a process, a lack of a plan, the lack of a real, real dollar amount. The theater. I've been a proponent, I was the first one to talk about the renovation of the theater and keeping it as an active role in downtown. The group that's there now has no idea how they're going to spend the money that they're going to make. They've never even spoken to the owner of the property. Now, you'll hear the board say we did. The Board of Selectmen, not one sitting member of the Board of Selectmen ever talked to the owner of that property. And I got that from the owner of the property himself because I've talked with him. He wants to do something. But it's like anything, when you send employees to talk to the owner of a property and the Board of Selectmen are talking, you know, taking it by eminent domain, you know, you're hurting your, your argument. You're hurting the opportunity to get that person to work with you. Now it's confrontational, you know, and we don't need that. We need to be able to work with business people. 
I brought the uh, Kenworth Truck Company to Stoughton years ago by going to the owner, introducing him to a piece of property that would have been suited for his needs, and he took it up. I also brought a National Guard recruiting office to downtown Stoughton years ago when Stoughton resident uh, Sergeant Major Jim Kelly was there, and we got him into a building in, in that area, right in the downtown block where the theater is. You can get a lot done by working with private development, private owners, instead of trying to say, we're going to take your property by eminent domain because you don't know how to use it. Well, there's a lot of, it's, there's a lot of projects on the you know, docket right now mm -hmm. where uh, whether it be the post office, the train station, Randolph Savings Bank, which has already been acquired, the State Theater, that the town is looking to, in some way, shape, or form, acquire. Well, so, you, know, you, brought, let me, you brought up the Randolph Savings Bank. Randolph Savings Bank was purchased for $650,000. We took ownership, and then a few months ago, the chairman was quoted on your station of saying we're going to flip it. So why did we buy it to start with? Why did we spend $650,000 of the taxpayer's money only to sell it? Are they gonna sell it for a million dollars and make us more money? I doubt it. Uh, at a recent meeting, it was discussed with all the repairs that building needed. So we're gonna need to make some of those repairs just to make it marketable. So I don't think that'd be a huge expenditure, but here we go again is that it's the process that they campaign so hard on that all this new spending is going without a realistic dollar amount. Now, the sewer project, a majority of residents from the area don't want the sewer, but yet they're claiming we can make X amount of money because of all the new business that will come here. Based on what? What studies have you done? Have you brought anybody in from the real estate, commercial real estate development field to say that that's great, we can develop it, we can bring you money? No, but yet they've come up with the dollar amount for the sewer. You know, I know they use a lot of in-house stuff, which you know our engineering department is very talented and they're probably pretty accurate on the cost. But again, what's the return on our investment? So you've got $1.6 million for a theater, not including the renovation cost, as you know. Now you have the $10 million sewer without a real idea of how much money is gonna come back. We bought a $650,000 building that now we're gonna flip. I mean, how do we make that investment? And when we all talk about these things, the one thing you know, and we'll talk we, briefly about the police fire station, is that we've needed a station, for fire station one, going back to the 90s. And I think that you know, the two areas that we need to focus on in funding in the town right now is downtown. The chairman, Mr. O'Regan, had some great ideas with downtown, but they're spinning their wheels now. We're not getting anything done. I mean, let's face it, Jeff, you've seen this. There's a hole in downtown. It's been there so long now that I would challenge anyone to drive by and look, and if you look close, you'll see a tree growing out of it. You can see the top of the tree. That's how long that that's been vacant. How is that good to our tax base? We should be working with people to invest in downtown because the first thing people see about the town of Stoughton, they're not gonna know about the $10 million sewer or the theater or the Randolph Savings Bank. They drive through downtown and it looks less than desirable. You know, so I think there's a philosophical approach here of trying to acquire the parcels, the, the big parcels in downtown and control the downtown revitalization process. Whereas there's an alternative so solution out there of letting the private market drive it, letting the private business owners drive it. Uh, it sounds to me, not to put words in your mouth, that you would fall more along the lines of letting private development spur the growth of the downtown. Uh, how do you get that to happen when it hasn't happened for the last 25 years? Well, it's easy. It's Stoughton being Stoughton. And we seem to step on our own toes instead of coming to the table. There's no member of the Board of Selectmen current or in the past that I wasn't willing to sit with. Uh, I've disagreed with people. You know, and uh, a person that I've said this with more than any is John Morton. We have a, a difference of a lot of issues, but we always sat down and we talked about the good of the town because I know that John and every member of the Board of Selectmen, everybody wants what's good for the town, but for some reason we can't agree to disagree and then come to the middle of the table and say, okay, well, all of our ideas, which it should be, five members of the board agree and can tell the residents why this is good for them. I can't sit back and tell the residents that all these millions of dollars in new spending is worth it right now when we still need a fire station. We haven't even put a dollar amount on that other than the 30 million I heard from the Board of Selectmen talking about a police 
fire station combined. Well, in my opinion, we don't need that unless it's a savings, and that's what they should have done, is they should have taken the articles they put for the town meeting coming up this year, the annual, and to go out and get a committee and get a consultant to work and say, it's cheaper to do this. They haven't done that. They went through, they went to town meeting, and it, you know, it got voted down. So that's the process I talk about, is that if we need something, we should, we believe in it, like a public safety building, we, didn't, we shouldn't have wasted the time of town meeting. And that's what it was said. It was wasted to the point that the current Board of Selectmen came back to the meeting of the Board of Selectmen after town meeting, and they said, what did we do wrong? Well, I know what you did wrong. You didn't convince the voters of town meeting that it was worth the investment. So that's the process that needs to be changed. We've got to include everybody. Your idea for Stoughton, my idea for Stoughton may be different, but together we've got to come up with the idea to get it done. I believe in the fire station. I think it's an insult that we have not put that on the front burner. Our firefighters are doing a stellar job. Uh, Chief Laracy coming in and doing a great job, a few years on the job now, has made a difference. And we're still operating out of a building that was built in, I believe, 1926, 1927. So how do we, how do we fix that? Because I feel like when you, you know, I've done these interviews now for four or five years and you hear the same talking points. Right. And that's not directed at you, but it's, <clears throat> in, it's just in general from all the candidates. We need a new fire station. We need downtown revitalization. What's the key to actually getting it done? Well, and we'll start with the fire station. Well, where, what's your plan to address the Freeman Street station, which you know is called the ruins by you know some of the members on, mm -hmm. on the uh, force? Right, no, exactly, because we haven't put the investment in it. Now, some people will say the selectmen should do this, the selectmen should do that. The selectmen's job is to be the chief executive, the highest elected official of, in the town, but to work with our town manager, to work with the, the departments, to give them the tools to do the job. And we haven't even had a town manager that has supported this. So when we can agree that we've got to get something done, uh, Dick Fitzgerald come in for the master, uh, facilities master plan, and that's been kind of messed around with. You know, that's the idea. We need to prioritize, you know, what the needs are for the community and take that to the voters and say, listen, this is what we need. Public safety is of the utmost importance. Now, if the combined building is the cheaper way to go, then fine. I've said right along, we should extend the building on Freeman Street. Uh, there's some buildings that are for sale there. And, you know, if you're going to talk about eminent domain, there's no better use than for a public safety purpose. There's no reason we can't build on that site a brand new building and then either take the old building and merge it into the new building or have another need for it. You know, maybe we could sell it. So you to like a, that location for the building? I liked it because it, okay. it is centrally located mm -hmm. and uh, it's been, you know, there have been, I'm not sure if uh, Fire Chief Laracy, I believe, agrees that that station can work. And you can modernize it. We just have to pick up some more buildings. The police chief I saw on TV said that she would have need more people and building renovations within the next five years. Well, that's a simple fix, is we own the property all to the right of the police station. You could build into that, add on to the police department, and suit their needs for space and the updates that they need. And it would probably be a lot cheaper to do that and build a new fire station than it would be to access land that we don't own now. We need a pretty good piece of land to put this police fire station on. That's going to be more expensive than if we can live within a footprint of the land we own now. So that's just my, I just, I agree that we need these things, but the way this board's doing it is just, you think about it, you know, $30 million for this, $10 million for this, $1.6 million for this. These are all things that we don't know. The public safety I'll take out of it because you don't get a return on investment for your tax dollar in that. That's an investment in public safety. But when you're talking about a $30 million sewer system that started with the discussion of one piece of property that needed sewerage, now it's you know, this plan to go down to, uh, you know, pass almost to the Brock and Lyon area, and it includes Campanelli. Uh, Campanelli. Based on what data? I know one I, piece Campanelli of Campanelli is not exactly full, though. I mean, would, would, well, would sewer help spur growth in that? I'm not qualified to say that. That's what a process would do. You get somebody in there to say, wow, if you had this sewer, you know, this building would be sold and it would be a bigger use. And, and But that's what they have said, though. Well, no, what, no, they have. That's but what they the economic have. development coordinator said, the engineering department has said. But there we go. Let the private sector tell you. Those people are not qualified to say that. That's like me talking to you about TV production. 
It's not my wheelhouse. I don't know that. But somebody that does, that there are agencies that work for municipalities. And we also have the Mass Municipal Association that we don't take enough advantage of that's paid for by memberships from all the communities. We also have plans that were done by other communities. Maybe we can find a building that we can buy the plans cheaper than having them done you know, at full cost. But again, we come down to that, it's a land issue as well. So looking at that, without the acquisition of the sewer, you know, if you have mm -hmm. your way, or addition of the sewer rather, and the de it sounds like with downtown, you wouldn't be in favor of the town acquiring the parcels to... Well, again, I wouldn't be in that favor. We of, I, I wouldn't show. be in favor of eminent domain until there's no other way. I would like to look at an urban renewal plan, which we can do, which involves, in some cases, involves the current property owners, because what you would do is you would gain, you would put lots together, and you you would work with them almost like a condo association. So you still get your private owners, you know, in some areas. There's so many plans we can do for that, but we haven't focused on it. Every time we start to talk about downtown, the wheels fall off. One of them falls off for whatever reason. And, uh, and it happened just recently when the implementation committee, which was thought by some selectmen to be the greatest way to go about it, they rescinded the implementation committee. So they can do that, but it just comes down to focusing on what is really important. I think the two areas that I would be more concerned with for development would be the issue of downtown and the completion of a new fire station. Now, if the fire station issue ends up being it's cheaper to go with police and fire somewhere, I'm open to that, but show me the numbers. I'm just concerned with the record spending requests of this board on the heels of the school being built. There are people, you know, and the boards recognized it because they're having these little sessions to tell people you know, how to live within their means, or, or I'm sorry, to, to get tax relief. It's for the veterans and for the seniors and certain people, but what about the husband and wife that are making a living and you know maybe one person stays home to raise the kids you know how can they save you know I mean oh. there's just so much more money and I, I just I'm not against it all but I think we need to slow it down and pick what's really important for the whole community so what what project specifically would you say not right now to that the board that this board of selectmen has discussed it would, I'd say what I would support would be downtown right. and the fire station. But those, All are the, but those are the big ticket items. Like, for example, the, you know, do you support acquisition of the state theater by the town? Not, no. Oh, in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't have to be Not until domain. it's the last ditched effort. And it's not yet because we haven't even talked with the owner. Uh, we haven't involved anybody else other than the certain few people in Stoughton that think they know what they're doing. None of them have run a theater. I went to a public meeting and I brought... Bill Haney, who owns the North Shore Performing Arts Center, I brought him, and he's running a theater. He's making money with the theater. They didn't involve him in their process, yet they went out and appointed, I believe, 12 people on a new committee to look at the feasibility. Bill Haney's running a theater in Massachusetts. He worked, he had that piece of property, our old theater. He leased it uh, from Jerry Goulston when he owned the property years ago. He is a man with a proven ability to get the job done, and they didn't include him. So I'm, I'm not opposed to it if it's the last ditch effort. But right now, I, I hate to say it's not the right time. You know, again, we're paying enough in taxes. And I think it's, for some people, it's just going to be too much to bear. So moving on, because I wanted in the last few minutes, I want to discuss, mm -hmm. um, we're filming on March 5th, right after the March 4th Board of Selectmen meeting, where the selectmen discussed the, the case between former town manager Michael Hartman and the, the town of Stoughton and the, settle, the, the negotiated settlement between the two parties. Um, I want your take on that because you were on the board for the very beginning of this whole, I would say, episode that's gone on. And it, specifically, you, you recused yourself from voting whether to extend whether or not to extend his contract because the board had to take a declarative we either are or not going to offer him a contract extension. Um, so what's your take on what happened with the, do you agree that the, the town should have settled with Michael Hartman after having two victories in superior court? Or do you, do you buy the argument that there's, a, the town potentially had millions of dollars they could have 
been liable for if the appeal didn't go their way? What's your take on this? I'd say now, just for the record, when I recused myself, it was because that was the time that I asked for an opinion because I was challenged by the current chairman uh, that I couldn't be a part of the process. So I was waiting for that. So that's when I didn't take part, just to make sure that I was doing the right thing. Um, but I did vote to not renew the town manager's contract because there was legal precedence that his contract superseded the charter, and that's what everybody was focused on because he had an employment contract which spelled out his employment with the town. So what's gone on recently on a settlement and the first time in all my years that I saw a, a board of selectmen meeting talk in public about settling a legal issue, I, it's the, I've never seen that done well, in do you my think years. It should be, do you think it should have been settled or do you think the town should have no, said, no, you no, know, not at we all. won twice already, we're no, going to go at all, and win a third Not at all, because we had two judges say his contract agreement was the contract agreement. The board did nothing wrong. We voted within the six months that were required to not renew the contract. That was backed up in court twice, okay? If there's something there that is new that the, was brought to the board's attention, I don't know. But based on what I know and what is there is that we've had two decisions in the town's favor, I don't believe we should be settling. And because again, it's, it's, if we settle, there's more money involved than just what they're saying on the surface because the money that's settled would apply to his salary and that's gonna be money that we pay through retirement funds and so forth. It's, it's a bigger cost. So again, I can't say I believe firmly on what was there before. We should not be settling this case. We've gone to court twice. The town has been upheld twice. Unless the board's got something you know, out there that has changed recently, new case law, I mean, we should have attorneys that would tell us that. The attorney they have has never worked for the town of Stoughton that on this presentation last night, has never worked for the town of Stoughton that I remember. And you know, so they brought him in. They don't know the track record with the town. I, I just, it's, Again, I may be wrong because something may have happened in the last couple of years since I've been off the board that became new information. Uh, but if the information hasn't changed, I wouldn't settle with them. No way in heck would I. We're about to expire on time. I want to give you 15 or 20 seconds, and I mean that yeah. literally, to, uh, uh, as a pitch to the voters before we sign off. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Well, thank you for those of you tuning in. Uh, I may not agree with everyone, and you may not agree with me, but one thing I think we can all agree on that you know, we have to live within our means. We have to have a process if we're gonna spend your tax dollars as to how it's gonna be a return on investment to you and what, to the good of the town as a whole. Now, we need to be able to work together but have the courage to stand alone. There's a lot of decisions that are made with a five to nothing vote on this board. I believe you deserve more and to have the other side of the argument brought forward. I have the courage to stand up to work with these members of any member of the Board of Selectmen and to do it in the best interest of all the residents. But if I disagree, trust me, I will stand up and I will be heard because you deserve nothing, letter, uh, nothing better than just to have somebody that has the courage to stand up. I will do that for you. I hope you will consider voting for me on April 9th. Thank you very much. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Thank you for for joining me today and wanna um, thank you for tuning into this episode of Stoughton Spotlight and be sure to watch our other interview with the other candidate running for the Board of Selectmen and make sure you vote Tuesday, April 9th, 2019. Thanks for tuning in.